in this video is solving quadratic equations by completing the square. So the first thing that I want you to do, okay, is we're going to learn about completing the square. So the first thing is I want you to factor these three quadratic trinomials. So pause the video and play the video once you are finished factoring all three expressions. So these three expressions, the first one factors to be x plus 5 times x plus 5, which I can write, okay? I can simplify this expression x plus 5 times x plus 5. I can actually write as x plus 5 squared. It's the same factor twice. It happens again in the second one. It's x minus 8 times x minus 8. You can write that as x minus 8 squared. Last, that's x plus 11 times x plus 11. It's the same factor twice. You can write it as x plus 11 squared. When a quadratic trinomial factors to be the same factor twice, that's called a perfect square trinomial. Okay, if you hear about perfect square trinomial, what that means is when you factor it, it factors to the same, it factors to be the same factor twice. Now, this is called, this expression is called the square of a binomial. Okay? All perfect square trinomials can be factored into the square of a binomial. And we're going to learn about when we start solving using completing the square that having your quadratic expression written as a square of a binomial is very useful. Okay? So, I'm going to put a few more problems. I'm going to ask you about them. So hopefully we picked up on a pattern here. x squared plus 10x plus 25, x plus 5 times x plus 5. Okay. So based on the pattern that you saw, for number 4, okay, if I said, actually we'll do this. Instead of writing number 4, right below all this, you can write, fill in the missing pieces. So, number one, x squared plus 14x plus 49 equals x something squared. So, what we could see that we're saying this quadratic trinomial can be rewritten as a square of a binomial. So, what is that value that goes here? Okay, so that way it would be the same expression twice, okay, if you thought about it in factoring. Okay, as long as a is 1, this number, this times this, gives you this, right? First, whoops, outer, inner, last, right? This times, whoops, this times this gives you this. This times this plus this times this gives you this. This times this gives you this number. So the constant that we put here, okay, it has to be the same if it's the same factor twice. Multiplies together to give you 49, and then this and this add together to give you this. And it's going to be the same number that adds, so if you double it, you get this. That number is going to be positive 7. Number 2, x squared blank plus 9 equals x minus 3 squared. So the linear term is what's missing here, okay? So we could see that we end up, this quadratic trinomial should end up being the square of a binomial, okay? x minus 3 squared is the same as x minus 3 times x minus 3. Notice the negative 3 times the negative 3 is what's giving us that 9 right there, okay? This number is coming from this and this, right? Double this value, negative 6x. Okay, so one thing is we do not complete the square, okay? We're going to do something called completing the square. Notice, a needs to be 1, okay? If a is 1, okay? If this should be a perfect square trinomial, okay, so if it fits this pattern, okay, 
This number has something to do with this number. This number has something, the coefficient here has something to do with this number here. If I take half of it, I get this value, and then if I square it, I get this value. If I take half of this number, I get this number. If I square it, I get this number. Your constant term should always be half of your linear coefficient squared. And it will factor to be x plus, whoops, not b, x plus something squared. Well, this number right here, this number right here, okay, is always going to be half of b, which is what we had right here. Okay, so this is the general case of when you are going to be able to write a quadratic trinomial as a square of a binomial. Okay, so make sure you have that written down. Notice A must be 1, okay? So now we're going to start solving by completing the square, and we just have to take a little side note before we begin solving by completing the square. And what I want to go over is called the square root property. Okay, so solving by taking a square root, okay, this has to do with solving. So if you have x squared set equal to a, a is any real number. Okay, and I take x and I square and I, it equals a. There are two values that when I square give me a. Okay, that's because when I take the positive and the negative and I square it, I'm going to output the same value. So, if I take the square root of both sides, I get x equals positive square root of a and I get x equals negative square root of a. Okay, and so what's happening here is, and actually it has to do with taking the absolute value, that's because... When we take something and we square it, what's negative becomes positive. What's positive stays positive as long as x isn't 0 there. So when I take the square root of a number, okay, if x is a quantity, okay, being squared, and it's set equal to a constant number, I know that x is the square root of that constant value and the negative square root of that constant value. So, for example, if it said x squared equals 9, I can take the square root of both sides because I now, I'm trying to solve for x, so if I'm solving for x, I want x by itself. So now x is by itself, and it's plus or minus the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3, okay? I'm going to do two more examples, so you might need to open this box a little bit more, okay? Now, notice, I'm not simplifying a rat. I, well, I could simplify that radical, but this is called solving, okay? So if I had x squared minus 1 equals 11, okay? I don't want to take the square root yet because I don't have my quantity being squared isolated. So this is x squared equals 12. Now, there are two numbers that when I square them give me 12 the positive and negative root of 12. So x equals plus or minus 12. And the last problem, x plus 2 squared equals 9. Now notice it's not just x being squared, but it's set equal to a constant, and what I have right here is called the square of a binomial. You just saw this expression earlier in a video. When you have no other variables outside the square of the binomial, okay, I can take the square root of both sides. The square root of x plus 2 squared is just going to give me x plus 2, which is what I want because I don't want x being raised to the second power. I'm trying to solve for x, so I want just x, not x to the second. This gives me plus or minus 3, so what I really have here is two expressions, uh, equations going on. I have x plus 2 equals 3, and then I have x plus 2 equals negative 3. So I have x equals 1, and I have x equals negative 5. Okay, so this is taking the square root, 
to solve, okay? You can only do that when you have no other variables in your equation and all of the variables are in the quantity that's being squared and it's set equal to a constant number. So if I had an x outside, so let's say I have this, x plus 1 squared minus x equals 2. You cannot take the square root of this because the square root of x plus 1 squared minus x, I can't simplify that expression, okay? That expression can't be simplified. The only reason this expression gets simplified is because the square root and the power of 2 are undoing each other. They're what's called inverse operations, like adding and subtracting them to each other, multiplication and, and division. I can't, I can't take the square root of this because this is saying whatever this is, I'm going to subtract x, and it's its value. So it might not be a perfect square. Okay, so this square root property is important because this expression right here looks like the square of a binomial. Because if you can write it as a square of a binomial, you can use this square root property. So we're going to solve by completing the square. So number one, okay. So number one, if you notice, what we've had so far in order to solve quadratic equations is factoring. I cannot think of two numbers that multiply together to give me negative five and add together to give me negative two. So you can't solve this by factoring. But you know that there are either no real answers, one real answer, or two real answers. And there has to be a way. You must be able to solve a quadratic equation. So this is one of the ways that you can always solve a quadratic. What I want is, I want this to be a perfect square trinomial. Because if this is a perfect square trinomial, I can write it as the square of a binomial. And if I can write it as a square of a binomial, then I can take the square root and I can solve for x, because having x squared and x is not good. We know how many answers we should get, but the only way we can get them is if we can get this down to being x equals, okay, breaking it up. So, let's see, is this a perfect square trinomial? Whatever this number is, right, we should take half of it and square it, and that should be the number right there. So half of negative 2, okay, is negative 1. And negative 1 squared is 1, so that's not the number we want there. So what we do is, we bring it to the other side. Okay, so add 5 to both sides. So we are going to want, this is the part that's called completing the square. What we're actually, when it says completing the square, what we're doing is, we're adding in a constant to both sides of the equation so that we create the square of a binomial. So what's the square talking about? Not the shape of a square, but the fact that we're going to write this as a binomial squared. Okay? So we want the magic number that makes this a perfect square trinomial. And be what we know about algebra is, as long as what we add into the left-hand side, if we um, put it into the right-hand side, we have not changed the value of the equation. Okay, so it's still equal to this equation as long as what we put into the left, we put into the right. So half of negative 2 squared, okay, that's negative 1 squared, that's 1. That's the number that should go here, 1. And if you put, added 1 to the left, you have to add 1 to the right. So now, what's on the left-hand side is a quadratic trinomial. This is now, I'm sorry, not a quadratic trinomial, obviously it is. This is now a perfect square trinomial that can be raised to the second power. So, this can be factored to the square of a binomial. That is going to be half of this. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. That's going to always be this number right here. So this is x minus 1 squared equals 6. Okay, 5 plus 1 is 6. So now what I've got is x minus 1 squared equals 6. So what you did is you added in a constant value so that you created a perfect square trinomial because a perfect square trinomial factors to be the same factor twice x minus 1 squared. 
Now you add your constant terms on the right hand side, 5 plus 1. So now what you can do is you can use the square root property. Okay, You can take the square root of both sides. If I take the square root of both sides, I get x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 6. So this is x minus 1 equals the square root of 6, and x minus 1 equals the negative square root of 6. So if I add 1 to both sides, I can't add it to 6 because I don't actually have the value of 6. I would, these are not like terms, so this would just be x equals 1 plus the square root of 6, and x equals 1 minus the square root of 6. If you want to round your answers, you can take the square root of 6, put in your calculator, it's 2 point sum value, so you'd get um, 3 point sum value, and then you'd get negative 1 point sum value. Okay, so let's do a few more of these. Okay, so x squared plus 10x minus 6 equals 0. We're going to solve by completing the square. If you wanted to try and do this by factoring, what two numbers multiply together to give me negative 6 and add to positive 10? That does not exist. So we need another method for solving this quadratic equation. That is completing the square. You can always solve a quadratic equation by completing the square. So what that means is we need a perfect square trinomial on the left-hand side. So Let's check, is x squared plus 10x minus 6 a perfect square trinomial? No, it is not, because this constant term always needs to be, as long as a is 1, it always needs to be half of this number squared. So, this is not the number we want there. So we bring it to the other side. And so, we're going to add in... A number, which we're allowed to do, okay, we are not changing the value of this equation by adding in a constant value as long as what you add into the left, you add into the right. So the number that would make this a perfect square, that would make the number that I need to insert here, that makes this trinomial a perfect square trinomial, which means it can be rewritten as a square of a binomial, has to be half of b squared. So half of b squared, 10 over 2 is 5. So 5 squared goes here. That's 25. Okay, so now this x squared plus 10x plus 25 is a perfect square trinomial. That means it can be written as the same factor twice, which means it can be written as a square of a binomial. It's going to be x plus 5. Okay. Whatever b is, positive 10, half of that, that's what goes here, equals 6 plus 25 is 31. So now we've got, I'm just going to bring my work right over here, we've got x plus 5 squared equals 31. We take the square root of both sides, we get x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 31. We can take the square root because our goal is to get x by itself, to solve for x. Right now, x is being added by 5 and then squared, so we can undo that square by taking the square root, okay? Just so you know, if your expression looks like this, you cannot take the square root of both sides because you cannot simplify the square root of x squared plus x, but you can simplify the square root of x plus 5 quantity squared because the square root and this power of 2 undo each other. This expression says before you take the square root, square root of x squared, you have to add x to it, so it's not a perfect square expression here. This expression is a perfect square expression. It's x plus 5 raised to the second and nothing else. So this becomes x plus 5 equals the square root of 31, x plus 5 equals the negative square root of 31. Take away 5 from both sides, you can't combine them, they're not like terms, so this would just be x equals negative 5 plus the square root of 31, x equals negative 5 minus the square root of 31. 
If you wanted to round your answers, you could. Okay, so let's practice another. So number three, minus 2 equals 2x plus 8. Okay, so first off, whenever you're solving a quadratic equation, you need to have it set equal to 0. Okay, so I can't do anything really until I get this thing set equal to 0. You should always look at it set equal to zero first to check to make sure it's a quadratic equation. Yes, you always want to look at it in its standard form. That way you know what method you should be using, okay? So can I think of two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 10 and add together to give me negative 7? No, because if I could solve this by factoring, I probably would want to because it might be more efficient, okay? It would be more efficient, meaning less work for you, but you can't. So that means I'm going to have to complete the square. Okay, so if this was a perfect square trinomial, that means this number right here is half of this number squared. Negative 10 is not half of this number squared. One of the giveaways is the fact that this is negative. So I have to add 10 to both sides. I left that opening there because I am going to, what is what is completing the square? Completing the square is the method of when you add a constant value in both sides so that you are, you've created a quadratic trinomial that is a perfect square trinomial, which means it can be written as a square of a binomial. So I have to take half of this number, which is negative 7 over 2, right? That's half of it and I have to square it, but this would just be a decimal, so you need to leave it as a fraction, okay? Do not write this as a decimal. So half of 7 is negative 7 over 2. If I take negative 7 over 2 and I square it, okay, that's negative 7 over 2 times negative 7 over 2, that's positive 49 over 4. So I'm adding positive 49 over 4 to both sides. Now, the left-hand side is a perfect square trinomial, which means I can write as a square binomial. This is always going to be x plus b over 2, and b over 2, half of this is whatever we have right here, which is minus 7 halves. Don't write it as a decimal, okay? So now, I need to add 10 plus 49 over 4, so I need to make a common denominator. So that's going to be 89 over 4. Okay. And now I can take the square root of both sides. So that's going to give me x minus 7, whoops, x minus 7 over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 89 over 4. Now, if you have a fraction, Okay, a over b, that's the same as the square root of a over the square root of b. So, I'm just going to erase this side note so that I have some more room, okay? And, I'm going to continue this work up here. So, x minus 7 halves equals plus or minus the square root of 89 over 4. So, the reason I wrote this, this is called the quotient property of radicals, okay? You could break up a fraction that's inside of a radical, as well as if they're the, if you're taking the square root of both of them, you could put it back together as one fraction. This is actually the same as minus, x minus seven halves equals plus or minus the square root of 89 over the square root of four, right? This is the same as, whoops, this is the same as the square root of 89 over the square root of four. So now I break this up. This is x minus 7 halves equals positive square root of 89 over 2. 
And then x minus 7 halves equals negative square root of 89 over 2. So we add 7 halves to both sides. Whoops. And now when we put these fractions together, we can't add the numerators together because they're not like terms. But we can write it as one fraction. These would be our two answers. Okay, so just be, be careful here. You can start working with fractions, okay? Not all our answers are going to be wonderful values to work with, integer values. Okay, if this number... Okay, if that number is odd, we know when we take half of an odd number, we're going to still end up with a, we're going to end up with a fraction, okay? So now, past three problems, we've encountered A always being one to begin with. You can only complete the square once the quadratic trinomial has an A value of one. So number four, we're going to go over what do you do if A isn't one to begin with. completing the square. Issue is, you can't solve this by completing the square yet because A must be 1. If you're going to complete the square, A must be 1. So, what you're allowed to do if you are solving and trying to find the values of x that make this equation true, you are allowed to divide by a constant term. Okay, you are not allowed to take an equation and divide by a variable, but you are allowed to divide by a constant term. We talked about this in solving systems of, of equations. It's called making a multiple equation. Okay, so dividing by a constant term is okay. So if it was 2x squared, right now in the original equation, I'm sorry I didn't talk about that, a was 2. But I need a to be 1. So if I divided this term by 2, I would have a to be 1. I would be at x squared. But if I divide this term by 2, I have to divide this term by 2, and this term by 2, and this term by 2. And now, okay, now do I have a quadratic expression in which a is 1? Yes. So now I can start completing the square. So I look. Half of this squared, is that negative 11? No. So I need to add 11 to both sides. That gives me x squared plus 4x equals 11. Now I want to add some number to both sides, some constant value, so that the left-hand side is a square of a binomial. Um, so I can end up factoring it to be the square of a binomial, I should have said. So this is a perfect square trinomial. So I have to take half of this number, so that's going to be 4 over 2, and square it. So that's 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. Okay, so that means this is now a perfect square trinomial. That means it can be written as a square of a binomial, and this is going to be x plus b over 2. Half of 4 is this number right here, 2, equals 11 plus 4 is 15. Okay, so now we have it as x plus 2, no other roaming variables other than inside this set of parentheses right here being squared. We take the square root of both sides. We get x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 15. So this is going to be x plus 2 equals the square root of 15. And then x plus 2 equals negative square root of 15. So this is x equals negative 2 plus the square root of 15. If you take away 2 from both sides, x equals negative 2 minus the square root of 15. All right, we'll practice one more. Four, five, let's do, uh, 
So negative 8x squared plus 10x minus 1 equals 5x squared minus x minus 9. Okay, actually let's put plus 9 there. Sorry, I changed the problem. Negative 8x squared plus 10x minus 1 equals 5x squared minus x plus 9. So I'm going to solve this by completing the square. So the first thing is I want to see this in the standard form of a quadratic. So I am going to... Take away 5x squared from both sides, add x to both sides, and take away 9. Okay, now I'm going to use completing the square, but I can't start completing the square yet because a must be 1. And right now, a has a coefficient of negative 13. So we do not want to have negative 13x squared, we want to just have x squared. So we need to divide this term by negative 13. So we need to divide this term by negative 13. And we need to divide this term by negative 13. And we need to divide this term by negative 13. So that's going to put us at x squared minus 11 thirteenths x plus 10 thirteenths equals 0. So, oof, fractions. That's okay, you can still complete the square even though you have fractions. So now we can, I wouldn't even try looking at factoring. We've got fractions, I would just go with the fact that you know you're gonna complete the square. So if you're gonna complete the square, you know this is not the number that you want on that side. So we take away 10 thirteenths from both sides. And that puts us at x squared minus 11 over 13 x equals negative 10 thirteenths plus, oh, equals negative 10 thirteenths, and we know that what we're going to be doing is adding a constant value into both sides so that the left-hand side is, in fact, a perfect square trinomial. So this number is going to be half of negative 11 thirteenths, okay? So let's do that work. Half of negative 11 thirteenths is negative 11 thirteenths over 2 squared. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So this would be negative 11 over 26. Oof, this is going to be big. Okay, so we need to take negative 11 over 26 and square it. That's going to give us 121, positive 121 over... 26 squared is 676. Whew. Okay, so this is now a quadratic, this quadratic expression on the left hand side is now a perfect square trinomial. You made it a perfect square trinomial when you added in this constant value that was half of this number squared, which means you can now write this as a square of a binomial. So it's going to be x and then half of negative 11 thirteenths is negative 11 twenty-sixths. And now what we have to do is we have to do negative 10 thirteenths plus 121 over 676. So 676 is a multiple of 13. So we don't have to change the 676. But we do have to change this fraction. So 13 times 52 gives us 676. So this is going to be 520 OK, 
okay, plus 121 over 676. This gives us x minus 1126 squared, okay? And now we add, so negative 520 plus 121 puts us at negative 399 over 676. And we have x minus 11 over 26 squared. And we go to take the square root, and we get x minus 11 over 26 equals plus or minus the square root of a negative number. Whoa! We got a square root of a negative number. This is not real. So this is an example when you do completing the square, and you get the square root of a negative number. This is when you have no real solutions, okay? We're going to study complex numbers, and once we do, you're going to actually give me the answers, what they are. Okay, but right now, when you get the square root of a negative number, you stop and you say, this has no real solutions. This didn't just happen because we have a lot of fractions. It just worked out this way because of the numbers that we have. So whenever you take the square root of a negative number, okay, right now, when you're in the process of completing the square, just stop and say, that's no real solutions. Okay, the other ones we have we have done in the past, the past four problems, they've all had two real solutions, okay? So let's do one more of these. Just to pra practice the fractions part. That was number five, so let's do number six. So 3x squared minus 5x minus 8 equals 0. I'm going to solve this by completing the square. It's set equal to 0. It's in the standard form of a quadratic equation, so that's good. But if I'm going to complete the square, a needs to be 1. a is 3 right now, so I want to divide by 3. You can divide by constant terms. Okay, You can divide by constant values as long as you are solving an equation. Are you solving an equation? Yes. So this becomes x squared minus 5 thirds x minus 8 thirds equals 0. So now I'm ready to start completing the square. So I'm going to add 8 thirds to both sides. That's going to give me x squared minus 5 thirds x equals 8 thirds. Now I'm going to add, okay? Don't play around with, in this expression, don't try and, I mean you can check, half of this squared. Okay, I know I should see a 25 in the numerator, I don't. You can just add 8 thirds to both sides, forget about that, just do the process of completing the square. Okay, so I'm going to have to take half of this and square it. So half of that is negative 5 thirds over 2 squared. So half of 5 thirds, negative 5 thirds is going to be negative 5 sixths squared. That's going to be 25 over 36. Okay, so this is now a perfect square trinomial, so we can write as a square root binomial. So it's going to be x plus half of b, so right here is half of b, minus 5 sixths, equals 8 thirds plus 25 over 36. So this is x minus 5 sixths squared equals 8 thirds plus 25 over 36. We have to add these two fractions together, so we need a common denominator. Common denominator will be 12, okay? So 8 thirds is what over, sorry, did I say common denominator of 12? Common denominator of 36, and 3 times 12 is 36. So we don't have to change this fraction at all. So 3 times 12, so we have to take 8 multiplied by 12, that's going to give us 96. So this is 96 over 36 plus 25 over 36. So this is going to be x minus 5 sixths squared equals, that's going to put us at, let's see, 121 over 36. Okay, 96 plus 25 puts us at 121. 
take the square root of both sides and we get x minus 5 sixths equals plus or minus the square root of 121 over 36. Well, this works out pretty nicely because 121 over 36, positive number, that's good. That means these are real solutions. And this is going to be the square root of 121 over the square root of 36. That's going to become 11 over 6. So this is now x minus 5 sixths equals plus or minus 11 sixths. So that's x minus 5 sixths equals 11 sixths. And then x minus 5 sixths equals negative 11 sixths. So we add 5 sixths to both sides and we get 5 sixths plus 11 sixths. So that's going to be 16 over 6. So that simplifies down to 8 thirds. And then add 5 sixths to both sides. That's going to give us negative 11 sixths plus 5 sixths. That's going to give us negative 6 over 6. It's going to bring us all the way down to negative 1, a nice integer value there. Okay, so make sure when you are completing the square, you get the standard form of the quadratic, meaning you set equal to 0. Then a needs to be 1, so you need to divide off the constant term. Just constant term means no variable, okay, so that a is 1. Then this value right here, bring to the other side and fill in the value that makes this the square root of a binomial. This number is always half of this number squared. This number is always half of b. Okay, that allows you, when you can write as a square root of a binomial, it allows you to take the square root. Okay, and that allows you to solve any quadratic equation.